Peggy 18. My obsession caused this great foulness, and it is shameful that I must rely upon you to set it right. Hello and welcome everyone to another fun episode of Darkest Dungeon here on At Your Professional Walkthroughs channel. Well, it's another episode which means another visit to the dungeons. Now, I do not have any shield breakers in my party. A problem which I have with this level 2 shield with this level 2 shield breaker is following she has fading, minus 2 speed, minus 5 dodge, and off guard. That is only for the first round, however, but it's still minus 4 speed and minus 5 dodge. So overall, she would have minus 10 dodge on first round and minus 6 speed. Not a chance. It's better, therefore, to take lower level hero. It's potential for her or him to have lesser negative quirks is higher. We cannot upgrade anything because we are missing both beads and both crests. So potentially me looking into anything that would reward me with either the deeds or crests would be a good choice for this week. Let's see what's available for us. Short champion level. The problem here is, obviously, I do not possess any proper healers. Reward would be portraits. We have 47 of those. A veteran is also for portraits. Also portraits. So we are not do going to the beach this week. Weld would give us another musketeer trinket. Three busts, okay? Now, here's the thing. Champion level raid for 15,000, 9 busts, and ancestral trinket. Interesting. Medium length champion level raid for 9,005 and another bounty hunter helmet. Warren's Apprentice level 4,500 to Busts and the Chalice for Vestal. The estate where the Bloodsuckers are at 5,000, 12 Crests, Baron's Invitation, and Shard of Glass. This is a really interesting. Trinket for the Flagellant class. Now the Ruins will give us 3,000 gold, 2 portraits, and the Agility Talon for the Bounty Hunter. It's a cool trinket. Even though it's just the basic one, still, plus 1 speed, plus 4 dodge, that can help you that many times. This is an interesting option. We have 15,000 gold, 18 deeds, and the Ancestor's Coat. The problem here which I'm facing is one important fact. I do not have a proper healer in my party. Meaning, if I would go into Ruins level 5, I would have to rely on Renault to do majority of the healing. So either stress related or HP related. Because in Ruins level 5, you do not only come across like the skeletal enemies. You can come across the occultists. So that's both bleeding damage and potentially stress damage. Madman can be present. You can come across ghouls, you can come across gargoyles. That's tremendous amount of stress related damage. Or just general damage. So I am heavily considering doing the courtyard. Reason why I'm looking into the courtyard 
is we have some amazing trinkets in my inventory so potentially I can actually prevent two of my party members to not get the crimson disease therefore they will not be craving blood and have ton of debuffs on top of them plus if I would go into the courtyard one thing will happen the specific enemies bound only to that area will start to circulate amongst the remaining areas except of the farmstead so even if you are in a cove you can come across the bloodsuckers and you can have a completely healthy party none of them have the crimson curse but you can leave with two party members with that disease if you have that you are starting to face one major issue if you do not have sufficient amount of blood vials in your inventory on which I have been skipping mostly due to the fact that I did not want to start the damn thing yet that can cause an issue plus I do not have the blueprint for one important building in place that's this Do I dare to pronounce this? Senuine Witners? Let me know if I said it correctly in the comment section. This requires 80 busts and would produce 2 blood vials every week. It's easy in the start if you have only few heroes affected, but if you have lots of heroes affected and you do not have sufficient amount of blood vials even taken with you on the raids themselves and then back in your town your heroes can actually die from the freaking curse so imagine that for example Renault or Dismas would die because of the curse so you cannot take them to the damn darkest dungeon on top of the hill therefore you are losing the option to get your hands on some achievements farmstead is cool for grinding but there are some special groups and parties which I would love to try out there for example if I can take Bestel, Jester, Leper and Man at Arms you have Jester and Men at Arms for boost, you have Leper for massive amounts of damage. Also, Jester deals with stress, and you have Vestal for healing. That can be one fun party for that type of adventure. Plus, later on, when you have the Endless Raid, it's different. The advantage about doing the Farmstead is because from the items well you can switch to the jeweler and here for the crystal shards you can make only one specific trinket for each class however look at the bonuses So as you can see, if I would put even few of these on the screen, they have some amazing bonuses. There is also the negative effect that you can have dramatically reduced accuracy, be more likely to be stunned or something, but if you're dealing more damage and you're dealing more healing, for example, the heretical passage for vessel class 
The only negative thing about this trinket is 10 plus percent stress. That can be easily negated by one of these freaking trinkets in our inventory. So for example, this one. The area box. Minus 25% stress. So yeah. Most likely, I'm gonna go ahead and do the farm stat. Maybe I'll get completely wiped out. Maybe I'll survive. Luckily enough for me, right now it's only a short apprentice level raid. Maybe next week we're gonna have better luck with the options and I'm gonna be able to go for more veteran level raid. The reason why I don't wanna go directly into the champion level raid is that the previous episodes were more about the bosses in the apprentice level difficulty. It's never advised to jump from green dungeon to red dungeon. If you are doing green dungeons, stick to the green dungeons. If you're doing the veteran dungeons, stick to the veteran dungeons. Work with the classes that are available to you. But the portraits are not worth it to me right now. The rewards are not even close to what I would call good enough. I'm getting the option to get ton of abomination class trinkets. Yet I do not have yet a single abomination in my group. Which stinks. Abomination has its place in your party. But... It's going to be probably Farmstead this week. So wish me luck. Let's see if we can deal with their gear. Oh yeah, one thing to note. I have fully upgraded the reduced cost of the blacksmith upgrades. Uh, that is why also the blacksmith looks a little nicer. But this will also be beneficial because if I were to go, well not all the way up, let's see, do I have someone here who needs to level up their gear? Okay, here. So this was previously much more expensive. So right now we are working with a highly reduced cost of the upgrade both for the weapons and both for the armor. So this is definitely beneficial. Let's switch it up a bit. This will do. So let's see if I can manage to pull off the farmstead. Scouting is not important in farmstead. So I will probably hold out on the scouting whistle. And most likely I will take something else. Now when it however comes to getting provisions for the farmstead, in the endless run, you just need to fill in your inventory to the brim with everything you can afford. Because it's gonna take you a while to get somewhere and to return with something. So usually it's more advised to do the endless runs once you have finished most of the game, for example. Or at least you are working with a decent amount of funds available to you. Right now, I'm broke. I should be working with the basic budgeting skill in mind. So let's say I will not go under 5,000 gold. Next week I will not go under 8,000 gold, etc, etc. Setting up these levels will ensure that once you are forced to spend more money, you will have some sort of reserve or you will be able to splurge out more. But you should keep always some sort of backup. Not like me a few episodes before when I was left with zero gold. Shovel only one. Let's see, click three. Let's see, click three. Let's go with one, four, and that's it. Blood vials, we have 12 of them. So that will work, but only for a short amount of time.
I might, however, start looking towards setting up our parties for the Crimson Kurt DLC so that I have more variety of footage on my channel. Wish me luck. Blight had struck the harvest again that year, and the miller was desperate. He came to me, hat clutched tightly in filthy fingers, stinking of sweat and manure. Seated comfortably in my observatory, surrounded by telescopes and other delicate apparatus, I recognized his misfortune as an opportunity, and I agreed to lend him my expertise. So obviously Farmstead looks like nothing else we have seen before. We see this massive, massive gate with some sort of cosmic diagram of some star system, which might refer to a specific sign or constellation of stars, which might lead to something dark. God, I hope we're gonna survive this, but we should. So these are the enemies of the farmstead. We are dealing with a massively different variety of enemies. Obviously all of these look like they've been possessed by some meteorite or some sort of ore or something which resonates from within their bodies. We have the foreman and we have the farmhand. Farmhands usually make the bulk of the enemy force. These are your basic enemies like skeletons, etc, etc. The more advanced units tend to put special boost and repost on them, so most likely I will try to target the two here or try to prioritize the foreman. He has much larger health pool and he can boost these guys into dealing much more damage. They are not that resistant to blight or bleed, so taking people like Houndmaster or Flagellant or anyone else will do you well. So the foreman will be something of a priority. As you can see, the debuffs can relate to stress, so my plus 20% stress is pretty dramatic, especially if you don't have a stress healer in your party. The bleed is stacking up, but they still have 8 HP on the foreman, so he would have to go two more rounds, which I would not like to happen. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. So this is how Farmstead works. If you kill an enemy, you are filling in the bar into the completion up in the right corner. However, the defeated foes will swiftly be replaced by waves of despicable reinforcements. Your party must endure this onslaught without pause or hope for respite. Because of the strange nature of time's behavior in the farmstead, you can retreat without no penalty at any time. However, if you retreat, you are not getting anything. And basically you have just spent all the gold on equipping your party, taking the provisions and you return with only the provisions which you sell back so you are making effectively a massive loss in your budget. 
this is the definition of the kill meter. There are some potential pauses in between the waves on of the enemies, but we are doing the first ever raid here. So no pauses, most likely more variation of enemies from farms that will present themselves and we'll see how well we will be able to deal with them. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. So lucky enough for us, the protective collar is a great thing because of the massive amount of dodge equipped to the Houndmaster. Now when you kill one of the farmstead enemies, you can see these crystals replacing their position. The crystals should be eliminated just due to the fact that if a turn passes and you did not manage to dispose of them, Later on with the race difficulty, there are larger variations of these crystals. They will explode and deal a AoE damage to your potential party or attack specific party member. Back to the pit. But when we are disposing of the crystals, we need to keep in mind that we are freeing up the spots in the enemy ranks. So potentially what will happen is, next round, they will get more reinforcements, Another one falls. or they can get a two-slot reinforcement. When you are, however, against just farmhands, it's better because you do not have to worry that much about someone like the foreman dealing much higher damage or doing debuffs to your party. You are more worried about the single target damage dealt to your party member or a blight potentially. Let's try and finish off the third one, even though he has passed his turn. But by killing him, we are filling in the progress bar. Executed with him. The dodge on the crystals is horrible. As I'm not sure if you were able to see it, it showed minus 4 dodge. So usually it's good to make sure you kill these things. And potentially what you can of course do as well is potentially, 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 you can kill the corpse before it can spawn into the crystal. And here we see the plow horse, also affected by the crystal's disease. These things can later on spawn in the stealth mode, so potentially what you might consider is taking the shield breaker because one of her talents is to reveal the stealthy enemies in the enemy ranks here. But she is also, or the horse is also, less resistant to blight or bleed, so plague doctors Shield Breaker also because she deals Blight damage. Houndmasters, Flagellants, Jesters, great for this place. Yeah, this reduces the stun skill chance. So you see, the horse just went into the stealth mode. So usually what happens is, from the stealth mode, it charges your ranks and deals added damage to your party members. That is unless you can take it out of the stealth. 
formation is broken. As we might see here. Offensive. And this can also mix around. Mix around. This can mix your party members. So if you have Vessel in the second slot, it's less convenient than having her in the back. Prodigious size alone does not we are filling the in the bar. Blade. Scarecrow is another enemy from the farmstead. This is also a tough one to deal with. Especially due to the fact that it usually spawns in with the stealth the mode. Crumbles. Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. Or is filling? And trust me, farmstead gets harder and harder as you come here. Obviously, this is more Another easier because we are coming here for the first time. A negative quirk on the Houndmaster has activated itself. We have effectively lost a turn with him. Might do an AoE heal here. And the horse. So now we have effectively two enemy units with higher HP pool in their party, which we need to get rid of. Rearing Strike is another variation of the attack the horse can pull off. So as you see, Blake Doctor would be perfect here because Literated. he can deal blight damage and also with the battlefield medicine can remove the blight from our party members. Also I would want the leper just so that I can kill two of these crystals at once for example. That's another attack from the horse. And I just realized I kind of screwed up because I should have prioritized the crystal. I'm not sure this is gonna stun the horse. Okay, lucky us. This can be a bit more challenging to deal with. Obviously now I cannot attack the farmhand because he has repost activated. So potentially any attack oriented on him before I would kill him would be returned by him counter attacking my units. Let's try and take down the horse, the bleed damage will do that. Let's try and pull in the foreman. Let's heal the bounty hunter. So obviously this is not the most efficient party to deal with the enemy. The bigger the beast, the greater the glory. I really wish I had judgment activated on the Vestal instead of the stun. But that's bad on my end. Repose has been deactivated. Foreman will definitely die here. Eradicated. We are approaching the end. We need to wait one turn for the enemy to respawn. Don't worry, they didn't give up or the game didn't crash. Do 
darn it, I could have activated the Scooby Snack. Let's try to throw a stun or two around. Deal some damage to multiple farm hands. So the blight is stacking up here on our flagellant. And I have only one more anti venom. And of course, the farmhand can restore its health. You know what? Let's activate this. Let's give you the holy water and let's stack up some bleed onto these guys. So this one is definitely dead. This one, however, will survive. Let's try and kill the first one. Let's try and kill the first one. He is dead. Let's try and stun the second one. He resisted. Slowly, gently. This is how a life is taken. So I don't mind the flagellant taking damage. He is perfectly equipped to take damage and deal damage because he has talents to restore his HP. One of them has been taken down. You can heal the flagellant. I'm sure he won't mind for the time being. And that will be it. A trifling victory, but a victory nonetheless. So overall what you can see here is that the reward is not that great. We have received money for any of the provisions which we came back with. But the cool thing is that we collected 12 shards. So we have some shards now and we can start saving up for one of those cool trinkets. And also what you might have been able to see that the kill count has added up the corpses here. You can already find YouTube videos where people have like 400 kills in their endless run. I have never managed to pull that off. I'm sure there is a key to it somehow. I've never managed to pull that off. Especially because, spoiler, in the later endless runs for the farmstead, what can happen to you is that you are facing the bosses from, let's say, warrants, ruins, etc, etc. So you are dealing with endless boss battles in the endless runs. And remember, if you kill, for example, the Fulminating Prophet, that's only one freaking kill. So that's gonna be just one more corpse on the massive pile of damage dealing enemies. But hopefully, this was a fun change of pace from the previous episodes here. I know we just went from the boss battles into the DLC content, but you know, I gotta keep thinking about how to keep the videos interesting despite the fact that the game came out in 2016 and there's like a fresh irritant to some, a sanguine memory to me hundreds of other channels that have managed to cover this content before me but then again I'm working with limited hardware and I always wanted to see how much luck or content can I generate for this title before we get our hands somewhere in the future on Darkest Dungeon 2 towards which I'm looking forward to. But in the meantime I want to thank you for watching this video all the way up till this part. If you liked what I do here, maybe check out the full list of Darkest Dungeon and also check out the channel from the link provided in the description of the video for more additional games that I am able to cover so far. Hopefully I will see you next time or in the comment section and till then I wish you all the best, bye bye.